Good morning, dear students. In the last lecture, we have learned about the anatomical positions, different planes. Then we have learned the terms used for the various relationship. And then lastly, we have also learned about the terms used for the different movements which takes place at a particular joint like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and etc. Now, in the general anatomy, the lecture after this introductory classes is the first lecture onto the scheme. And why do we take this lecture onto the scheme first before going to any other lecture in general anatomy? Okay, that I am going to explain you in the next slide. Now, this is the slide showing you the transverse section passing through the limb. You may be from the upper limb or from the lower limb. And in this section, you are seeing that the superficial structure which is covering to the limb in this cross section is the skin. Deep to the skin, you get a fibro fatty tissue layer, okay, which is filled with the fat, the loose areal tissue filled with the fat and this is called as the superficial fascia. Now in this superficial fascia there are presence of the veins and arteries and there will be minute cutaneous nerves also which are going to supply the skin. Deep to the superficial fascia the third layer which we are seeing here is made up of a thin membranous structure and this is inelastic membrane covering tightly to the deeper structure and this is called as the deep fascia. Now, deep fascia is a membrane which is made up of mostly the collagen fibers which are inelastic. Okay? Now, deep to this deep fascia, you are seeing that the, there are group of the muscles okay, which the deep fascia is covering and deep fascia is also sending the septa or partition from its under surface to divide these groups of muscle into various compartments so that they can function independently. So after the deep fascia there are muscles and then in between the muscles there are nerves, yellow color is nerve, the blood vessels, the vein that is and vein and arteries are there and deeply situated is the bone okay now why we are teaching you the skin first as a first lecture into the general anatomy the reason is that when you will go to the dissection hall and will start dissecting a limb say for example mostly you will start with the dissection of the upper limb then you will have to give the skin incision that means you will give an incision with the help of your knife into the skin and will reflect the skin so as to go to the deeper structure okay so you will expose the superficial fascia then you will cut the deep fascia so then you will go to the muscles groups and you will learn different types of muscle their origin and insertion and side by side you will also learn the nerves which are traveling and their branches similarly the arteries and veins which are going and you will learn the branches of the arteries and tributaries of the vein. That is the normal plan. And lastly, you will go to the bone and the joints, where you will study the joints, which are uh, the joints between the two uh, ends of the bones. Now, that is the region why we are studying the skin first. And after the skin, you will learn about the superficial fascia, then you will learn about the deep fascia in a separate lecture and then you will learn about the bones okay because bones gives attachment to muscle then you will learn joint and then the muscles nerves and vessels like that so many structures you will have to learn which you will met during the dissection in this series of general anatomy lecture we are not going to teach you the details of all these structure as far as the gross anatomy is concerned what we are going to teach you in the general anatomy, a general aspect, a basic concept aspect of the various structure which you are going to match during the dissection. Okay, 
So we are coming now on to the first lecture of the general anatomy which deals with the structure scheme. So now I am moving to the slide on to the scheme. Okay. Skin is an important system of our body. When I say it is the system of our body, what does it mean? It means it is the system like any other system of our body. For example, respiratory system, cardiovascular, nervous and reproductive, urinary like many other systems which are. So skin is also considered as a system, not an organ or not a structure which is covering to the body only. It is a full-fledged system of the body because it has its own structure. There are the derivatives of the skin. It has lot of function like any other uh, system of the body. That's why sometimes it is also called as the integumentary system. Okay. So this should be clear in your mind that skin is just not only a organ it is a system okay and you will understand this why it is called a system when i will teach you functions after two slides now if you see the structure of the skin which you have already learned in your lower classes it is made up of two layers epidermis and dermis you know it well okay epidermis is nothing but the superficial layer okay superficial to dermis and dermis is deeper to the epidermis if we see the epidermis it is a thin layer made up of the epithelium and epithelium are classified mostly in two categories simple and the stratified where multiple layer of the cells are present so this epidermis is the epithelium which is stratified and its name is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium because the superficial layer in this epithelium is the keratin okay a cornified layer now deep to this epidermis is the dermis which is made up of the connective tissue and predominantly it is collagen bundles which are running in this dermis along with the other fibers that is elastic and reticular fibers okay so this is in very brief the structure of the epidermis and dermis let us come to see that this epidermis which is the superficial layer of the skin gives rise to many structures that means these are the structures which are dried from the epidermis and partly in case of hair by the dermis too and these are the hair our hair are right from the epidermis and part of the dermis. Nails, our nails, sebaceous gland and other glands like sweat gland uh, through which we sweat. Okay. And then the gland like the mammary gland which is present in the breast in females is also a derivative of the skin. Right. Now, if you classify the skin in human, there are two types of the skin, thick skin and thin skin, depending on the thickness of the hmm, epidermis and dermis. Now, thick skin is present only in palm and sore. Okay. So, the palmar surface of the hand, as you have learned, what is a palmar surface and the sole of the foot, they are covered by the thick skin. These are the only two places otherwise everywhere else in the body it is the thin skin okay now if you will see the thick skin of your palm or sole then you will notice that there are no hairs okay and since there are no hairs there are no sebaceous gland but on the other hand the sweat glands are in plenty because uh, sometime you must have noticed that you started sweating from your palmar surface of the hand okay now in case of the thin skin, hmm, there is presence of the hair, then sebaceous gland, sweat gland, okay. And you have seen that this the difference between the thick and thin skin is just the thickness and many other structure, not just only the thickness, but the presence or absence of the hair or the presence of the sebaceous gland. Coming to the next slide, which will define you the thick
thickness, I mean say thin skin and the thick skin. Here is a histological diagram of the thin skin where you can see this is the epidermis where a homogeneous layer which is covering to the epidermis is the keratinized layer or cornified layer of the epithelium. This shows the presence of the hair, hair follicle, sebaceous gland which is opening into the hair follicle. There is the presence of the sweat gland. This is the sweat gland with the duct it is opening onto the surface and the deep side inside. Okay, deep to the dermis is the superficial fascia. Okay, that is also called as the subcutaneous tissue or hypodermis. So this is the structure of a thin skin and this is the structure of a th thick skin where the epidermis is quite thick and made up of many layer and there is a thick layer of the cornified layer, keratinized layer. Now, if you see the structures of, I mean, say various layers of the skin, which I'm sure you must have already learned in your lower classes, it is made up of many cell layer. The basal structure or the layer of the deepest layer is called as the stratum basale, which is resting on to the dermis here. So this is the dermis and Beyond this, it is the epidermis. After the stratum basale will come, stratum means layer, okay? And second layer which will come in this epidermis of the thick skin is the stratum spinosum. And then you are seeing some of the layers, uh, I mean say some of the cells in this layer which is called as the stratum granulosum where granular structures are filling the cytoplasma of the cell, okay? That's why it is called stratum granulosum and a homogeneous layer which is seen here, okay, that is called as the stratum lucidum which is present only in the thick skin. Beyond this stratum lucidum, there is a thick layer of the stratum corneum. So these are the different layer and deep to it is the dermis. Now all these layers are also present in the uh, thin skin but they are very thin, okay, that means they are not having many layers of the cell and the keratin or the corneum is also uh, a thin layer. So this is just a very basic structure of the thick and the thin skin histologically. Great detail will be taught to you when you will go to the histology, okay? Now coming to the functions of the skin, which is very important and that will tell you that why the skin is classified as a system of the body because it is serving many functions, okay? Because having the def definite structure and many functions. The major functions of the skin are as under. It protects the body. Why it protects? Because naturally it is the outermost covering. It is completely covering the body. So naturally it is protective in nature and since it is thick, because it, epithelium is made up of many layers, is stratified, okay, is squamous, keratinized, outermost layer is the keratinized layer, so it protects the body very well, okay. Now the protection is from what, okay, it protects us from the mechanical injuries, okay, because it is tough, so it protects us from mechanical injury, it also protects us from the heat, coldness, okay, you feel uh, the cold and heat, okay, and then you just take the, I mean to say, steps to protect yourself from the heat or the cold, and then this skin also protect us from the foreign invasion by the microorganism like bacteria, parasite, and virus, okay, this cannot pass it, okay. So, in many ways, the skin is protecting us, okay, and it is maintaining the deeper environment of the body which lies deep to the skin, okay. So the internal uh, environment of the body is maintained by the skin in the way of protection of the body, right. Coming to the second function of the skin, if this function is the prevention of the loss of body fluid. Body fluid means the tissue fluid which is in between the cells or the tissue which is there. And this tissue fluid cannot come out of the skin because skin form a barrier for this fluid, okay, to come out. Similarly, it forms a barrier that no fluid can go inside the skin. That means skin doesn't absorb the water. If you are swimming in a swimming pool for 
one or two hours your skin doesn't absorb any water otherwise you will swell up okay so neither the water can go passing through the skin inside the body neither the body fluids can come outside it okay so this prevent the loss of the body fluid and why and how we will see just now okay now third function is thermoregulation thermoregulation is an important function of the skin in this way it maintains the constant body temperature 37 degrees celsius which is necessary for all those biological i mean say reaction which are taking place in our cells and body otherwise they will stop if it will go below that level of normal temperature of body or above that okay so that's why there is a mechanism in the skin which keeps on i mean say which keeps the temperature constant okay and this is you must have seen or noticed that during the summer season you sweat a lot lot of perspiration comes out of and this form a cool watery layer on the surface of the skin okay so this is the mechanism while second mechanism is that in the summer season okay the blood vessels that is capillary bed which is present in the dermis because epidermis is avascular there is no blood vessel but definitely in the dermis there are lot of capillaries and blood vessels which dilate so that the more and more blood can flow through the dermis what is the use uh, for more blood flow through the dermis the use is that in this way body can lose the heat okay of inside heat is lost okay is low otherwise it will keep on increasing okay this is a mechanism of the heat loss or the opposite is there when it is the winter season in winter season the all the capillaries okay to a great extent they constrict okay so less blood is flowing through the dermis of the skin and in this way body is trying to preserve the internal heat okay otherwise the body will be also as cool Uh, uh, up the same temperature as outside externally so you must have noticed that even though there is the snowing outside or zero degree temperature is there outside in environment but your body is maintaining a constant temperature right so this is the mechanism by which the body regulates the temperature okay you must have noticed that hmm, when you are walking in on a snow or when you are in a Uh, temperature below the uh, zero degree Celsius, uh, or in extreme cold, you must have felt the pain in the tip of the fingers and the toes. Okay, tip of the toes, because at that time the blood capillaries are constricted and very less blood is going to the tip of toes, so they start dying. Okay, they feel the starvation for oxygen and nutrition, and in that condition they start panning. Okay, similarly the tip of the nose, the lips, and the ear lobules. Okay, they their skin is uh, I mean to say uh, the uh, capillary flow. Okay, or the blood flow in these superficial structures it becomes less, and they may also start hmm, the cells superficial cells may start dying, or the pain is also felt. so this is how the thermo regulation is done with the skin which is an important function now the skin also act as a sense organ the largest sense organ of the body is the skin that's why it was sometime called as the organ not a system the now but it is called as the integumentary system now what sense they go from our skin and how it protect our body the heat okay touch and temperature these are important sense which goes from our body the lightest touch can you can perceive or you can recognize the lightest touch okay so our skin is very sensitive and in this way uh, it also protect uh, indirectly to our body then synthesis of vitamin d the vitamin d is synthesized in the skin in presence of sunlight and this vitamin d you must be knowing that is very important for the absorption of the calcium from our intestine otherwise calcium will not be absorbed hmm? even if you are drinking lot of milk and this calcium is used for the uh, bones hmm, formation of bone or maintenance of the bone another less important function is the excretion of the excretion of the waste material and this excretion of the waste material that is 
the substance like the ammonia, the urea, the carbon dioxide, they are excreted along with this fatigue, okay? But this is not an important function in the human skin. Of course, it is very important as you must have learned in the lower animals like frog where the skin act as a very important excretory organ beside the kidney. And the last function is the absorption of the lipid soluble material. That means, uh, Water cannot be absorbed through the skin as I have just said it, okay, neither the tissue fluid can come out from it, but why the lipid soluble material out of which lipid soluble vitamins are also there and there are some uh, chemicals which are lipid soluble, okay, hmm? and this is possible because they cross the cell membrane because our cell membrane, okay, in the epidermis, uh, all those cells, hmm, everywhere in the body since cell is membrane is made up of the phospholipid okay the bilayer phospholipid cell membrane which has the hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends okay uh, these are head and tail and they are arranged into layers and they since they are phospholipid made up of the lipids they allow only the lipid to pass so that most of the ointment which we rub on our skin okay they are lipid soluble ointment that means they are made in the wax uh, i mean to say petroleum jelly or vaseline uh, in which the medicine is mixed and this medicine then gradually is absorbed by the cell membrane okay which the water based medicine is not absorbed okay so if you mix that same medicine into the water it will not be absorbed it will be absorbed only into the petroleum jelly so these are the various functions of the skin and then i told you in the beginning that we will be dealing in the skin very important aspect of the skin uh, which are usually asked in the exam as the short note so i just finished my first this short lecture onto the skin where we have learned the structure of the skin types of the skin and the functions of the skin. In the next lecture, I will go to the various other important aspects of the skin. Thank you very much.